Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, what I hope will be really a, an exciting and enjoyable moment. So uh, I'm Professor Stéphane Giraud. I, um, I am really an expert in strategy uh, at IMD based in Lausanne, where I am today. And I would love to know first a little bit about you and, and, uh, and, uh, and your context. So um, um, Rachel is going to launch a, a first poll question, which allows me to, uh, to, to, to understand where you come from professionally. Good, good. So there's a really uh, a big diversity. Uh, what surprises me is that actually, although we're going to talk about the luxury industries, uh, the majority of you are not from uh, working in, um, in the luxury sector. Uh, since in fact, the biggest group is uh, you're working uh, in, in another sector. So I suppose the topic of sustainability is also relevant um, uh, relevant to you, but I just want to let you know that the focus today will be specifically on um, on, on on considerations for you know the nine sectors uh, of the luxury industries, right? So I have a second question for you, um, and uh, and this time it's to understand what you think where your brands or your firms are at the moment uh, in terms of sustainability. So Rachel is going to open the second question. So, you know, what's, uh, uh, what's interesting is that I think definitely a, a larger group uh, come from firms that are already quite active in, uh, in sustainability. Uh, a, a, a majority, 50% of you, uh, half of you think that at the moment we're managing the risk, you know, and we're focused on compliance. Uh, and there's um, almost a third of you say that uh, we are leading our industry. So um, let me ask you, and please feel free to use the chat here to tell me why, what kind of things are you doing to lead your industry through transformation? The shift towards circular economy is really interesting. Trying to eliminate waste in fashion, very important stake engage full value chain circularity projects. So the circularity is coming quite strongly here. Decarbonize, supply chain transparency. Very nice to see this um, variety of, um, of initiatives. Blockchain, yeah, so the role of technology coming in also. Right, and also what was interesting in this survey is that uh, a smaller group of you, uh, almost close to 20%, though, think that uh, your business is falling behind, right? And, and actually, this is where we're, we're going to start. It's, um, it's uh, with this uh, uh, premise that it's really important to, to act um, and to act now uh, because the, the, the luxury brands that are not going to be uh, really demonstrating concrete pro progress on sustainability and a sustainability agenda, and I will clarify probably along the way what that means, um, are the ones that might, um, that might become uh, much less desirable and ultimately might uh, disappear, right? So let me share um, uh, the presentation that I have prepared uh, um, for you. So what does it mean? Uh, and then I will open for a few questions uh, and discussion. So where do we go from there? You know, what are if sustainability is going to be a new condition for being a relevant, desirable luxury brand, I think it's important to understand how are we going to do that? So I'm not going to go through all the details uh, in this short uh, uh, moment. But I want to give you a little bit of um, uh, guidelines about strategizing for positive impact. So you understand that in the environmental context and societal context where we are, what we used to know as corporate social responsibility, which was something we did outside the core business in order to mitigate the bad things that might happen in our core business, this is no longer possible, right? We are moving into an era where 
any company on this planet, not just luxury, will have to demonstrate that the world is better with them than without them. And that's what we call positive impact. So what's the roadmap for positive impact? I think that very important what companies and brands have started to do on defining an ESG agenda, okay? And remember that no company can resolve all the problems uh, in the planet. So ESG needs to be made based on choices. And here you will have a reflection based on the purpose uh, of your brand. ESG has paid off. You know, here are a few studies that show the rewards. So there's a good business case also uh, for investing in ESG. And I think ESG, the most important positive contribution of ESG is that it's a, a framework that is structuring how you measure things and improve. Think of it as around topics related to the environment, topics related to society, topics related to governance and ethics, things of measuring and applying continuous improvement. The problem with ESG, and this is now starting to change, has been that it was mostly a tool for disclosing how much is a company at risk from environmental catastrophes or social upheaval or etc. So it was more a risk management, but it was not so much about looking at the real impact the firm has. This is changing now because companies are moving towards double materiality analysis where we don't just measure the external impact on us, but we also measure the impact that we are creating on the wider society, visible and invisible stakeholders. And that's going to be hugely important. However, the risk with ESG is that it traps companies into a logic of optimization, the current operations, um, without transforming them. And for positive impact, we're going to need to start thinking about strategic renewal, okay? So in other words, where are we going to compete? How are we going to win in the market? What is growth going to be? Should we change business models? Uh, should we acquire certain competencies? So the boundaries of the firm will change, you know? starting to question whether it makes sense to open luxury hospitality resources, uh, which is a decision about the corporate portfolio and the strategy of the firm. So it's the combination of those short-term uh, sprints and the longer-term transformation, uh, I call that the marathon, that's going to help you to deliver to create and deliver positive impact strategy. So I pause here. I would like to now take uh, a, a few questions and then I will, I will continue. I will close by, by discussing three initiatives um, that IMD and its community have been undertaking in order to help you uh, address uh, some of these questions. Ah, what are my thoughts on lab-grown diamonds? I think, you know, um, so it seems that the data are showing, the studies show that if they are made from uh, renewable energy, they are very energy intensive to make. Uh, if they are made from energy intensive uh, sources, uh, non-renewable energy sources, then they have a negative impact. If they are made from energy, uh, energy renewable energy, they are better than um, the natural stones. 
Um, the question about that is that the studies are only looking at certain facets. They're looking in terms of greenhouse gas emission, but I told you earlier, we need to have the net picture on the other E elements and the other S element to be definite about this answer. But whether we like it or not, they will probably be really, really important uh, for the future. Yeah, so the communication effort, you know, um, I think it's a great question. Um, and I think that there's been, to some extent, uh, some schizophrenia in, in the companies where I work uh, with. Huh? You see the, the supply chain, the product side, the supply chain are very, very engaged into um, reducing impact, ESG targets, etc. And on the marketing and retail side, um, the dream continues. It's about selling more, 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 more. So how can we continue selling more, more, more? We would need to close the loops in terms of circularity. Okay, so um, uh, otherwise selling more, 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 more can create uh, can continue the problem when we're in, right? So I think internal communication here will be very important. Yeah, so the external, uh, it's uh, um, luxury brands becoming much more engaged with um, stakeholders, with policymakers, uh, with regulators, uh, participates in, in the forum um, and, um, and, and, and reshape how society um, addresses uh, this problem. Another way they can uh, help is uh, by, and some of them really do, is by uh, um, financing innovation in all the new technology. You know, we are, we need a lot of new solutions in recycling uh, a lot of products, for example, in particular in the fashion sectors where a lot of materials still cannot be recycled. You know, so investing into that uh, is going to be a way of creating a positive change, but a lot of collaboration. What we call here at IMD, the non-market strategy. So how you bring on board and create coalitions with external stakeholders in order to create society level changes. Okay, so the question on the business models, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. Ah, do you think Gen Z and younger generation are driving the positive changes? This is also very ambiguous, you know. Uh, I was last week in a presentation uh, here on the power of brands um, and uh, in Switzerland. It's a study, new studies that are being made. And one of the findings was that, you know, this winter, um, very uh, a, a minority of the Swiss population has actually cut down on electricity consumption, which was requested by the Swiss government. And in the 16 to 24 years old, they even increased their energy consumption. So <clears throat> I told you the picture is very, very, um, very mixed. That's why if I go back to the point I made earlier, luxury has an enormous power to influence society through its messages. Uh, and it can really reset a lot of the mental thinkings uh, too, if it really wants to. Okay, so I think here you, you're asking very good questions and that will allow me to, uh, to conclude, right? So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, uh, some of you have already joined the uh, Reinventing Luxury Lab that, uh, which is an open program for the professionals of luxury sectors and across sectors. And this year I'm, I'm going to ask, you know, what's next for growth? Um, because growth is a positive concept, right? But at the same time, growing in volumes, uh, as long as the loops for circularity are not closely uh, tightened, um, we know it's also very much taxing on the on nature and the environment and, and also have social impact. So the question I will engage you over these two days with different facets of, um, uh, so a lot about the circular economy and how to make it financially viable, 
A second one will be about more how, if you think in terms of sustainable growth, what's the role of retail, whether it's physical and digital. And we'll look also probably about the use of data and analytics and developing data capabilities in order to better predict um, manufacturing, you know, because one of the scenarios is that we stop producing for stocks and just start producing on order, certainly in the luxury sector. So um, we're going to reflect on these questions. And as usual, there will be a, um, a mix of IMD faculty and uh, external uh, professional experts from the luxury and outside the luxury industries. Uh, to stimulate our uh, reflection and creativity on this topic. I also want to make you aware of a new uh, research initiative that uh, uh, our partners uh, uh, from HEC Lausanne in the University of Lausanne, Enterprise for Society, which also regroups a PFL, and Original, the technology company, we are um, asking brands to join uh, our platform because what we want to understand is which aspects of transparency mediated by technology is actually resonating and creating value for brands in customers' eyes, right? So, um, so here I, I give you the website for uh, our platform. Uh, the data are really for research purposes, so they are protected here. Uh, but we need more brands, we need more technology providers towards transparency and traceability in order to continue this research and deliver you with, um, with unique insights. The final thing I would like to, to say is that to find answers, to pose questions, uh, to discuss solutions, uh, our uh, luxury community, our luxury alumni, alumni working in the luxury sectors, whether it's on our EMBA, MBA, and executive programs have joined forces to create the IMD Luxury 2050 Forum, um, which is a venue where there will be content, there will be job postings, there will be webinars such as the one I'm giving now, uh, where it's going to be peer, a lot of peer-to-peer -peer also knowledge sharing uh, in order to progress on the sub subjects of the future. So you're welcome to scan the QR code uh, to join uh, this, uh, uh, this page. And if you want to stay in touch with me, you know, you're also welcome to use my, uh, my LinkedIn page uh, to do so. So I want to thank you very much for your active contributions. And I really look forward to diving into uh, into all your input in the chat because it's really important for, for the research that I'm doing. Um, I think you were close to 200 today and uh, I really want to thank you for your active contributions and, 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 for your, um, and for joining us today. So I look forward to welcoming you again at IMD. Goodbye. <laughs>